Hi, I'm Tom Lorisella, Chief Markets Editor for Morningstar. I'm here with Dave Sakara, our Chief U.S. Market Strategist. And we're here to talk about what's been happening in the stock market. We had another big down day, 4% on Wednesday. Dave, what's happening out there? Well, it seemed like there was a little bit of panic selling today. You know, just looking at the screens, everything sold off. And I wouldn't be surprised if there were some portfolios out there that were being unwound today. Essentially, from what I could see, anything that had a bid was getting hit. So I think the main cause for today's sell-off were just investor concerns, inflation, which you know we've noted has been running you know, hotter and longer than I think what people expected, is really going to end up hitting hard hitting earnings even harder than what the market has already been pricing in. So I was instigated early this morning. Uh, we saw weak earnings coming out of Target. Uh, Target stock ended up falling about 25% today. So really the short story on that stock is, is that this no moat rated company was unable to pass through a lot of their cost increases and saw you know, significantly higher shipping charges. Now we had rated Target with two stars before today's sell off. But we think the stock sell was probably actually overdone. Now, we plan on reducing our fair value by about 10%, but I think this is a good example of how the market can sometimes overshoot to the downside. What's the bigger concern here? You, so we had that particular issue with, with Target and its earnings. Um, as you noted, you know, the, the, the idea that inflation is running hot, that's not new. That's been going on for months. Um, what, is, what is the bigger concern? Is, the, is that we're, we're sort of hitting an inflection point in terms of inflation's impact on corporate profits and not just consumers' pocketbooks? What, what's happening here? Well, I think the target earnings really just hit home with seeing just how much that impacted their earnings. And I think as people are now you know, updating their models and thinking through over the next couple of quarters and even over the next couple of years, you know, trying to figure out, you know, f especially for these companies that don't have pricing power, you know, just how much is that going to hit their operating margins you know, going forward. And so that's why we saw that bring down in the retail sector, you know, a lot of valuations today. Now, if we um, um, t take a look at just the move that we had, a 4% down day, that's a big move. Um, that is a we're, big we're, move. I couldn't even tell you offhand the last time I remember yeah. seeing a 4% move. And um, what does it tell you about the market when we can have a 4% swing in just one day? What does it tell you about um, conditions about there, uh, out there? What does it tell you about investor sentiment? Um, what's, what's the takeaway from seeing something like a 4% move in a single day? Well, and we've been opining for a while that we expect to see this volatility continue. And it kind of gets back to, you know, in our 2022 outlook, we noted that there were four main headwinds coming into the year. And that was, you know, the slowing rate of U.S. economic growth. That was the Fed, you know, increasing or, you know, raising monetary policy, as well as, you know, we still are waiting to see the impact of quantitative tightening this summer, you know, inflation running hot interest rates rising. Now, any one of those factors you know, on their own is sometimes hard enough for the market to be able to price in, much less over the past couple of months, you know, the confluence of all four of those factors coming together. Now, what I would say is that at the beginning of the year, we did think that the market was overvalued and we weren't surprised to see the market sell off you know, for the first couple months of the year. But over the past couple of weeks, past couple of months, we actually think the market is you know, swinging too far to the downside. You know, sometimes the market does act like a pendulum and it just moves you know, too far to over and too far to undervaluation. You know, based on today's you know, decrease, you know, we had noted that we thought that the market was already undervalued incorporating today's you know, um, uh, the amount that it went down, you know, it's probably about 18 to 19% undervalued as compared to a composite of the fair value estimates on all of those stocks that we cover here at Morningstar. So um, uh, for, for, the, for an investor who might just be looking at the headlines, they see a 4% down day, they see more uh, scary news about the impact of inflation. Um, you know, what would you say to investors just you know, to, take, in, to help them take a step back um, and, and put this into perspective? Well, again, as a long-term investor, you know, hopefully you should have already kind of put together your own investment plan based on your own risk tolerances and your own long-term goals. You know, looking at the market today, we actually think now is actually a good time to be looking at you know, a lot of those stocks that we rate with wide economic moats. Those are going to be the companies that can you know, work through any kind of economic dislocations. Those are the ones that will typically have you know, the best pricing power, mm -hmm. especially those that we rate with like a low or a medium uncertainty rating. You know, we're seeing lots of those companies now getting caught up in this downdraft. You know, companies that over the past decade rarely have ever traded you know, below our fair value estimates, in many cases are now trading at four stars or even five stars. 
So those are the ones that I would think that investors today you know, should be looking at and actually adding to their portfolios. So is this a time then for investors who had some cash in their portfolio, the, the proverbial dry powder, uh, to start putting it to work? And, and if so, um, uh, where, where would you be focusing? You know, we do think that there are certainly a lot of buying opportunities out there for investors that do have cash. You know, a lot of opportunities, you know, especially in the growth space. The growth space, of course, you know, has been, you know, hit the hardest thus far this year. You know, some of the stocks there that we've noted, you know, would be stocks such as, you know, Amazon.com, Alphabet, you know, Meta Platforms, Microsoft, you know, large cap growth stocks that have been, you know, trading anywhere between now 25 to 50% discounts to our fair values that we think have just gotten caught up in this sell-off and have just been pushed down too far. At this point, though, would, should an investor, even an investor putting money to work, uh, should they expect continued volatility, be braced for, for more, more swings, maybe not 4% in a day, but still a lot of bouncing around? Yeah, hopefully not 4% in a day, but we do expect to see, you know, more of this volatility just as you know, on the days that we see, you know, good headlines, you know, when like retail sales came out the other day and there was, you know, some good underpinnings there that we saw the market, you know, move up over a percent on that. And then today, you know, when there's negative headlines, you have the market moving down on that. But we do expect to see that with kind of those four headwinds working themselves out over the next couple of months until the markets, you know, get better clarity as far as how those headwinds are going to work out over the second half of the year. Yes, definitely expect to see, you know, that kind of volatility. Great. All right, Dave, thanks very much for joining us here this afternoon. Thank you.